So it worked as the page, not her profile. You're good. Yeah. Thank God I was helping you all. I really appreciate it. No, moral support helps. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, on this beautiful sunny day. We've just had the good, beautiful sunny Sundays lately. Um, we were talking earlier today, though, and in, in a few days, we're going to feel the change. <laughs> yeah, but the leaves and yeah, are so gorgeous in the sun with the sun shining on them. So welcome everyone who's here. Welcome everyone who's watching virtually. Um, we're so glad to have you with us this afternoon and glad that you decided to take some time to spend with us here at the fellowship. So the first thing we do is sing our opening song. It's right on the front of your songbook. So if you're able, please stand and sing along with us. We 
bring our full awareness to the one divine presence, creative intelligence, the God of your heart. And from this sacred space, this heart space, we see with spiritual eyes and listen with spiritual ears. We feel in tune with love as we are transmuted by divine understanding of the universe. Within, we feel the peace of God at the very center of our being. A peace that moves out from us in all directions. Calming any troubled waters of our human experience. We affirm that this divine loving peace goes before us, making clear and straight our way always. And we know that all is well. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. some wonderful special music today from our special Corey Williams. Please give him a warm welcome. Um, thank you. All right, this one came from a meditation on gratitude that I was into one night. You know, our fellowship, capital G gratitude, the great big overflowing, giving, receiving, cosmic love machine type gratitude. That one. Gratitude is the attitude. I have to admit that I used to think that that phrase was kind of a hokey sentiment. You know, please and thank you, power of positive thinking, chicken soup for the grateful soul, and all that sort of thing. Ah, but I repent. I have now come to believe that that big G gratitude is, in fact, the attitude. The spiritual attitude that's got it going on. It's the sort of thing that if you can align yourself with that one principle, that spiritual dynamic... You're really getting in on the whole big deal. Our kingdom come, holy will, holy done, all that, you know. So that's what we're going to do for a couple minutes here. Just let ourselves align with gratitude. And the word itself connects to so many other interrelated words and concepts. But I'm going to ask you just to join me in a simple four-word mantra. Grateful, I am grateful. Grateful. I am grateful. Good. I'm going to let the piano sing here for just a moment while we breathe and just center ourselves in that gratitude for that which has been, for that which will be, for all that is in eternity. And feel free to join me once you catch the tune and to grace the mantra with your beautiful harmonies, for which I am always so grateful. Grateful, I am grateful. 
together. Um, in your song books, let's all turn to page 25. And if you're able, please stand and sing along with us. It's in
someone in a prayer, you have the prayer connection cards in your packet. Just drop those in the offering basket as it comes around later. Now I want to introduce our speaker for this afternoon. It's our wonderful Reverend John Taylor. And I don't know if he's changed his mind about his topic. Sometimes that happens as you're preparing. But if he hasn't, uh, even even if he has it, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, but I was especially interested in finding out about what the meaning of life is. So let's give him a warm welcome. <laughs> So, hi, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Okay, here we go. Do I turn this off or just leave it going? Okay, anyway. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about not the meaning of life, because there's many meanings to life, but a meaning of life that maybe will fit for some of you. And I've sort of been doing some research a little bit about this topic, and I think the meaning of life is about making decisions. Because truly, if you stopped making decisions, all of us would sit here in this room until we died of dehydration. No, like, like, think about it. If you stopped making decisions that led to action, that would be it. And, you know, that's really only half of the deal. Because to say it's about decision making kind of leaves out a lot of very necessary context. I would say that an additional meaning to life is figuring out the right questions to ask. The right questions to ask that get answers, that have decisions, that lead to actions, and yada, yada. So one of the things that you know is important for all of us to remember when we're going through this experience here as spiritual beings doing a human thing is that it's really easy to identify with being human because we're doing it all day, every day, all the time from the moment we're born. And that's a great thing. I mean, you know, it's about setting goals. It's about having things you're shooting for, people you love, experiences that shape you, you know. But I think if we were all going to be, you know, looking at our lives, there's some things that lead us to higher happiness and higher good. And I like to call those compass questions because they're sort of like your true north on what's going to make you a happier, healthier, more loving person. And you know, these are different for every people. I think a lot of times, for myself, I can only really talk about, there's this like idea when the ship comes in, when I like accomplish something that's very like tangible, like losing 10 pounds, making more money, fixing a relationship that's strained, uh, you know, whatever it is, it can be anything. You know, having an amazing adventure, changing my mind about something giving up a bad habit. I mean, these are things that each and every one of us has got a list full of things to do that we want to do, you know? And, you know, these all have value. They're not meaningless. I mean, two of my uh, favorite spiritual teachers are Alan Watts and Ram Das, and they actually did a conversation, like a sort of thing where they were talking to each other. And uh, Ram Das was always talking about emptying himself out. That was like his big deal. Like, I just didn't want to have any attachments or anything that was holding him back from being the highest spiritual person he could be. And Alan Watts just says to him at one point, he's like, you know, you decided to be human. Why not take the course? <laughs> you know, have some stuff you love. Fall in love. You know, get your heart broken. Get older. Get younger. You know, do these things that you can really only do while you're here in this thing. Because, um, you know, I mean, there's trade-offs, right? Like, when you're in unlimited consciousness, you know everything. Which, you know, you can't even, like, really process, like, when you're here. And I always liken it to, like, walking up 
to the ocean with a, a shot glass. And you dip that shot glass in the ocean, and then you kind of walk away with it. At what point does that shot glass stop being the ocean and just a glass of water? I really think that's kind of what's going on here. I think there's a little bit of that huge master essence in each and every one of us. And when you're in the ocean, man, you're just ocean. You know what I mean? But when you're in your little glass, you're in your little glass. You know, I don't know. I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of great stuff that happens while you're here. You know, a really good friend said to me recently, to health, wealth, happiness, and loving the journey to all three. And man, boy, did I like that. Because a lot of times around here, especially in like new thought circles, we talk a lot about your highest and best self. You know, what, is that, what does that really like look like? Is that like you being happier? Is that you getting some of those bucket list items that we were just talking about? Like when I lose 10 pounds, I'll really be there. I mean like, you know, if we're all being really super honest with ourselves, there's more to being here than accomplishing a bunch of stuff in this lifespan. It's, it's a little bit, I, I never like, like I'm in my 40s now, I never used to think like this when I was in my 20s or 30s, ever. I, I was just like, yeah man, I'm having all the fun in the world. But when you get older, your consciousness begins to shift slightly. And I think uh, mine's shifting a little bit. Interesting side note, the beginning of the fellowship service is very relaxing, unless you're the guy that's going to be talking later. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I would mention that. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like a runway, like, you know, you're like, oh, Jesus, Corey just got done talking. Yeah, so anyway, so uh, we're all spiritual beings. I, I believe we were doing something before we volunteered to come here. I, I really do. And I also believe that we all get a chance to volunteer or select something when we leave here. And by here, I mean this guy. Currently, this one is called John. Um, you know, I think we're all infinite spiritual beings. I think we're selected to have a human experience. And I think the reason that we did that I can only really speak for myself, but I'm thinking it has a lot to do with realizing that you are love and removing the blocks to presencing that love. I really, really do. I think that's it. Everything else is, as I like to call it, background sound. Anything that gets in the way of that, like that prevents you from being on that single-minded quest of knowing your love, removing any blocks that stand in the way of that, is filler material. And uh, it's probably, you know, good to maybe say that in a spiritual setting. You don't get a lot of chances to like actually say that out in the world when you're like with friends, family, clients, you know, sort of mild water cooler talk. You know, you're like, hey, what have you done to remove the blocks to being pure love today? You know, you're like, what the hell is this guy? You know, like, yeah, like, so I think that takes a while. I think that takes a while. I think it takes longer than this life span. I think we select very unique people and circumstances to help teach us new lessons. Okay, quick, quick show of hands here. Who here in this room has ever done a past life regression or perhaps had a meditation or a dream where you feel like you have ran into an earlier version of yourself or you got gifted with some knowledge that you couldn't possibly have known about something or some place. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm seeing a pretty good number of hands. And, and I know I've had several. I mean, I, I, I've had one dream that was so vivid. I was a Pony Express rider, and the name of my horse was Buster. And, and like, I don't know why, but after I had that realization, horses just liked me. Like, like, and I mean, we had this experience where we went to Cedar Point and there were these horses in the petting zoo and this one just was like doing this with his big ass head, just like, oh, like that. And it was just, it was, I was like, oh, there you go. And I just called him Buster, you know, and it was, that was revealed to me in a dream. And let me tell you something. Here's an interesting thing. If you've ever, I, I don't know, this would maybe be another interesting show of hands here because I feel like I might be alone on this. Have you ever been so deep into one of these 
windows into a different consciousness where you start having a conversation with an alternate you about how you're the real one. Has anyone ever done that? Okay, you're like, no, I'm actually living this. You're the dream. And they're like, no, I don't think so. When I wake up, you're going to go away. It's, it's a weird idea for a show. If you, if, you, if you make it, then, you know, maybe keep me in the executive producer place. Now, that's like an answer. Now, you know, what we're doing here really, I think, has a lot to do with why did we come here this time? And what are we trying to learn this time? I, I, once again, I think it has a lot to do with being love and realizing we're all in this together. We are all in this, we are all in this together. That, that, does not, that does not mean that like the people you dislike are no longer in it. Believe me, I got people I dislike. They're still in it. We're all crossing the finish line together. <laughs> Boy, that sounds like a very long process for some of us. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we've talked a little bit about why you're here, and that's a meaning of life. That's a meaning of this life. It might not be the meaning of your life, but it's a meaning. I kind of want to zoom out a little bit to a bigger point, which is why exactly is this pure love thing, the gratitude thing, we're all in this together. Why, why any of that? Why is literally any of that going on? Okay, now let me just start with some humility. All of this is way above my pay grade, all right? And I've only been given glimpses of this in spiritual meditations and experiences and accesses to a higher mind that generally speaking, for me, I don't get access to all the time. And this one consciousness is able to communicate with anyone, or as I like to call it, being on the phone with the head office. And sometimes the head office taps you on the shoulder in unusual ways and unusual places. Usually, it, I find, since you're here living a physical experience, and that's what it is, an experience, it likes to teach and do things through experience. But sometimes you get an actual direct communication that you hear in your spiritual center. And one of the bigger points that I have been able to ask this consciousness, and you, you don't need, this doesn't need to be you. This is just me telling my, my, my thing, but why any of this? And what I was told was, by this big consciousness was, I used to exist as one single entity. And then a long, long time ago, I splintered myself into innumerable number of pieces everywhere. Okay, it didn't say planet Earth, it said everywhere, which, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty Earth focused at this period of the timeline. Come back in a thousand years, it'll be different. But like, that mean, I took that to mean the galaxy and beyond. We're talking about big stuff now, by the way. Like I said, this is over my pay grade. Yeah. Um, and naturally, my next question is why? why? Why any of this? And the answer I got was, for purification and to learn through experience. I wanted, it wanted, we all want to learn as much as we can while we're here through experience. And experience is the best teacher. I think, I think, I think someone said something the other day about that. Experience is the best teacher, but it's usually an expensive lesson or something like that. And let's face it, this is an expensive lesson. This is an expensive lesson. Your life here in a human, you give, you give up everything. It is the ultimate process in gaining and letting go. Really, you, 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 could, you could not do this in a spirit form. You have to raise a family, you have to raise a family. To build a life, you have to do it one brick at a time. You know, and that comes with all the foibles of having an ego, and tripping over your own pride and your five-year plan, which is absolutely meaningless when you zoom out. But it's, it, I don't think there's any other way to do it. And thank goodness for that, because the galaxy needs you. That's a, such a crazy idea.
that like whatever this process is you are uniquely part of it and are in dispensable whatever you're doing however you're doing it is all part of the experience gathering process now I think it's really important to mention that this is not an original thought in like the slightest like th what I basically just described there is like the cornerstone of Shintoism which has been going on for 2,300 years in a lot of especially Japan a lot of Asian cultures which is the spark of life animates everything you are in that big bonfire of life and it's always loving and it's always moving just like a fire and it burns itself out and it spreads and it burns itself out and it spreads and it's just it's an amazing thing that people have been thinking about this for long long times I think so now okay we've been talking like big picture and I'd like to just maybe zoom back in a little bit more to like your meaning if you choose to accept it which is basically how to be more loving and I think one of the things that I could do personally is let go of an inner critic let go of perfection oh here's a great one I, I love this one I'll just do it so perfectly I just won't do it kind of show of hands the people who have ever struggled with that old chestnut yeah I see a lot of smiling faces uh, the brave ones rose their hands no but uh, yeah like, like you know or there's you know something in all of us that I think could be shifted with a little bit of loving consciousness and that's what this is about that's what this is about you know this wasn't in my notes but Corey nailed it did you know gratitude is the single highest emotion that you can constantly sustain like every, every other emotion has peaks and valleys so if you're in love you have a spike of being in love and then when your partner leaves the toilet seat down it goes down <laughs> you know what I mean like or it degrades over time it, I mean you can you know do a long slow climb up but gratitude is the highest level that you can constantly sustain at all times it just keeps flatlining and you can be there flatline in a good way so okay I think I would like for us to do a meditation about how to maybe presence love a little more effectively and maybe look at anything that's standing in the way of that so okay thank you all right so let's just uh, relax a little bit and uh, find a comfortable seated position thank you fellowship family for the honor of talking with you today and being with you today thank you for this sacred safe space where we get to talk about things like this and realize that we're all fellow travelers in love and uh, there just comes time when our backpack is a little heavy and you just need a good buddy on the road next to you to help out so let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose let's exhale audibly through the mouth letting go of any tension or stress let's do one more of those yesterday's history tomorrow's a mystery and today this moment is a gift the present so let's think a little bit about who we are right here and now and let's think a little bit about why we're doing this thing checking in with an intuition checking in with a higher self that maybe doesn't get talked to too often and you know you might not get anything today you know it might it might not every, not every day is a day for a breakthrough but every day is a day to discover something and even in the attempt to maybe ask that highest self of you a question even if nothing comes back as a good friend of mine would say silence is a communication so let's check in with that 
And I'd like to ask you, is there anything that you can just give up or leave behind you today that's standing in the way of you presencing this higher love we've been talking about? Could be an idealized version of yourself. It could possibly be a goal or something that you hold, or a standard that you hold yourself to. The inner judge or critic, whoever that guy is. Maybe you could just leave him alone or her alone. Just, just give it up. Just leave it behind you and just move on to something a little bit better, one day at a time. And maybe take a moment to visualize how that might open up some space for you. In your heart, and in your mind, and in your future, and give you some actions and some possibilities that are new and exciting. Being here with you guys is exciting for me. A dream realized. So let's just take a minute to think about that. Set our intention on one tiny thing that maybe we could let go or do that might help us presence more love and more loving kindness. Excellent. All right, now let's start to come back. Let's take a couple of deep breaths together in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth, wiggling some fingers and toes, maybe getting some gentle side to side with the head happening. Awesome. Welcome back to the fellowship. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. Love you. Oh, thank you, John. Better and better every time, man. That was so, so cool. Let's sing our thoughts, our prayers on page 35. teaches us that giving and receiving are one in truth. So let's open to this divine flow and consciously and intentionally receive the blessings and gifts of life and allow them to flow back out from and through you easily and freely.
You can't have one without the other, giving and receiving. And we at here at the fellowship want to thank each and every one of you for your generosity, for all of your generous donations that are going to usher us into and beyond our 41st year, starting this month. So Richard is going to bring the basket around, and I invite you to put your donation in there unless you are giving online or send your check to the office, in which case hold your gift in consciousness and know how grateful we all are. that you want to include, just hold it in your heart and it will be included. All of these divine, beautiful beings who are learning life's lessons as we all are, finding their way sometimes on a difficult path, a challenging path. But we know and believe and think of them as who they are, their true nature. They are love itself, just as we all are. And we extend to them our love. We see love finding its way to their hearts and helping guide them and bring to them the resources and connections and opportunities they need. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. And Corey's going to bless us again with another one of his lovely songs. No lessons, no lessons of our being? Um, well, we'll do that next. Okay. I guess. <laughs> it was one I haven't done for a while. It's called The Breath of Life. Breath of life today. 
take a moment from your busy way. Let the inhalation, the source of all creation, give you inspiration as you pray with a simple song of gratitude and love. Stop and breathe the breath of life today. Stop and drink the water of the soul. Feel this moment sacredly unfold. Let the flowing river, that sparkling life giver, Fill you and forever make you whole In the healing ways of gratitude and love Stop and drink the water of the soul The world will try to blind you To the present here and now Spirit's kingdom right before your eyes. It will wind you up and bind you to the future past and how. It will keep you running all the time. Just stop and breathe and you will find new peace of mind. Stop and bask within the light of peace. May this moment give your heart release. Let illumination, the beauty of creation, fill you with the grace that shall not cease in a holy dance of gratitude and love. Stop and bask within the light of peace. Let the Spirit's light in you increase. Just stop and live within the light of We will end with one of our fellowship songs, and this is uh, a really, really perfect one to end with, given John's talk and what we've been thinking about this afternoon. Um, please turn to page one, I believe. The essence of our being is spirit. And if you'll stand and sing with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
spirit of love unites us all. You can call it Allah, wisdom, peace, or love, Alpha and Omega, it's there if we but call. The essence of our being is spirit. for your message and Corey for your beautiful music um, and thank you all who are watching and all who will watch uh, later on in the week or in the months ahead I we do have some important announcements for you today and for the first one I'm going to introduce our steering committee member Richard Lassen do you want to come on up to keep this short. How many people have ever read our bylaws? Raise your hand. <laughs> a few. They're about as interesting as Dryer Lent. You know, it's, uh, it's what we've had to deal with. This is the charter with which we operate under. And it has not been revised for many years, and we have done so this last year. Uh, went through each section. And this is just to advise you that we have prepared a, a revised addition to the uh, Bylaws, primarily because we found that during um, the COVID uh, era, um, we weren't able to meet all the provisions that were set in the bylaws because of the pandemic. And so we have incorporated some new things like emergency measures that, like for example, um, if we needed to move our services somewhere else, we need to have a vote, but if we declare an emergency, we have the opportunity be able to do that without having to get people together to make that kind of vote. So we've written it also to make it in plain language. It's not a real lengthy document. We have um, several copies here, and we will be voting on it, an up or down vote, whether you approve it or not. And that will be three weeks from today, on the 22nd. And there will be copies, paper copies you can pick up here. Um, they will also be in the e-announcements, and then it will be on our website. Is that how it works? Is there another place? Yeah. Okay. So you can get copies of it, review it, and see what you think. Um, if you have any questions, you can call the office, or you can contact me. I'm in the directory. Um, try to answer your questions. But uh, just to give you notice that three weeks from today, we'll go back. Thanks. That's so true. When we um, ran into the whole COVID situation and, you know, people couldn't be together and we were trying, we, we just continued on. We did our best, but um, now our bylaws have a, a clause that allows us to uh, officially make those kinds of decisions uh, to the best, in the best interest of the fellowship. And um, there was a committee that worked on this. Uh, and it has been for a good year, going through each clause. And, and beyond that emergency clause, the other most important thing that we did, we didn't change much context at all, much of the wording, but we wanted to make it understandable and in plain language. And so we went through each of the, the clauses and tried to do that so um, anyone who picked it up could understand what what's uh, required. So, like, like I said, we have um, copies here. If you don't want a hard copy, I'll get it digital, digitally. We'll send that out in the uh, uh, email blast and also on the announcements. 
We also have um, Barb Kinsey offering a healthy living class. I've mentioned this before, but we have more details now. She is available and willing to teach this class for us on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. And the first one is scheduled for October 18th. They'll be held in the fellowship office probably about an hour. It depends on uh, participation. Okay. At okay. least an hour. Okay. And um, if you're interested in taking the class, uh, please get a hold of Barbara and let her know that um, you'll be attending. Death Cafe is scheduled for October 21st. That's a Saturday at 2 p.m. at the fellowship office. Um, a sound bath session hasn't yet been scheduled for October. Um, Julie said that if she doesn't do one in person, she would certainly be doing one online, but I'm not sure of the date. And then I was contacted by the Red Cedar Friends to tell us they're going to be doing another sale. Do you remember the sort of um, rummage sale kind of thing they had in the social hall last year to benefit the food pantry? And there are three ways that we can help with this. We can come and help them set up, which uh, it will be on October 20th. That's a Friday. If you want to help set up, come at 10 in the morning. The sale starts at noon on Friday, that uh, on October 20th. We can donate items. And if you want to donate items, you can bring them in anytime between now and then and just set them on that ledge along the windows in the social hall. You can see there are already some things collected there. And the other way that we can help is to shop the sale when that starts. So we can come on that Friday. They'll still be open on Sunday. So we can take a look and see if there's any little treasures we might want to take home. And that does it for our announcements. Anyone have anything they would like to add? Okay. Let's get into our peace circle and say our closing blessings.